Oh, shoot. Is that water or is that oil? The good news is we got it off the trailer, even though his ramps broke getting it on. So we had to build a ramp of timber uh, blocks. So it uh, came off surprisingly well, but it was a little bit squeaky bum. Uh, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna trust that we can get one, get down the lane, down this bumpy slope, and two, we're gonna get in there without sinking it. So here we go. This is definitely not forklift terrain. Fingers crossed we can get down really carefully. Here it is. Oh, and it's raining. It's raining and it's pouring. Come out. Ah, well, the wipers work. Oh, it is horrible weather. interesting bit how it does I mean I've just tipped some loose stuff here like you saw but I don't think it's not gonna sink in here it's not like it's mud Go on then, let me give you a quick walk around, uh, show you what we bought. And it needs a name. Humpty Dumpty needs a pal. We don't know what his name is going to be yet. Anyway, the boss, maybe it should be. So this is not, I had no idea how old this is. Maybe 80s. Um, it's a Perkins four-cylinder engine. So not dissimilar from the dumper, but a little bit less reliable, supposedly. But I imagine it's really easy to keep going. Um, so it's got a three and a half metre lift, I think. Three tonnes, I think. Uh, and pretty big tyres. Like, this isn't like a normal factory floor forklift. It's, um, yeah, and a front, front wheel drive. Is that normal for a forklift? I always thought it was the back, but either way, I just turned around here absolutely fine. So as you can imagine, with the concrete floors down here, you come in with the joists and I can use it to like, build the stuff up, you know, lift up, then up onto the top, even plasterboard, everything. Might have to get some bigger forks, extensions or something like that, but anyway, let's see what we've got. It's got a new seat cover, courtesy of Wednesday. And supposedly the lights work. There you go, look at that LED light. Anyway. So our lift, Tell you what, it's be quite useful for all sorts. Let's see how high it goes. A light bulb 3.6 meters it says on the on the plate guess it is that's nuts 
Right, let's shut it down, see what puddle we end up with overnight. It was 2,400 pounds, which is still a chunk of money. But actually, if we were gonna spend probably four or five times that on a telehandler, which yes, it would have lifted a bit higher and further, but we've proven that this is quite handy. Um, unfortunately, this went in the auction. When I was actually watching in the auction, it sold for 1,700 last week uh, or 1,800, but he's had to fetch it and deliver it here. And that was no, you know, he brought a huge, great tractor and trailer to bring it here. So he's made his bit. I'm happy because I got to try it out at his farm and make sure I was happy with it. I wasn't buying blind in an auction. And um, yeah, I mean, it's an old engine and it's leaky, but I know that these engines just go and go. Oh, shoot. Is that water or is that oil? I don't want to get into this now, but that's a lot of oil. New oil. He's just filled it up, hasn't he? Oh, joys. What have you done, Timothy? Rubbish. Um, I don't know if it's just... It hasn't come out of the top of the... I mean that that wasn't happening outside. Don't don't sit there laughing at me. We'll get this sorted. He'll be fine, he'll be a champ. Right, that little look. That, that's not engine oil, is it? Because it's separate. The engine oil will be there. That must be the hydraulics that's been topped up. And it looks like it's just come out of that hose there. So maybe it's because I ramped it all the way up to the top and I Glue something there. Good morning, welcome back. I hope everyone had a great Easter. We uh, didn't sleep much, a lot of lambing and stuff going on, but we're out the other side, only three sheep to go, but it's time to have a look at the forklift in a bit more light. So of course this should really get a full once over and I should be checking all the levels and stuff, which I will do. Um, fuel's just topped up, but for the small jobs I've used it for uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, I'm absolutely loving it. It's amazing to be able to have the capability to just move stuff around in a small space. Uh, even with the tractor, it's quite clumsy and it doesn't lift much. And the telehandler, there's no way I could get in some of the places. Um, so the, the, the leaking oil, the issue, I've worked out what it was. It's nothing too disastrous, thankfully. Uh, I've got Hugh back on the phone. Um, between us we kind of worked out what it was it's just simply the fact that it's been filled up too high now I'm no uh, mechanic but I think that is not original that just looks a little bit too bling and for that reason can I lift this up now uh, no I need to swing that one out swing that one up great for access this thing Put that in there right so this is where we're at so that's all the wiring that goes up to the controls up there now the hydraulics obviously there's a lot of hydraulics on a forklift the filler is here and like i said this does not look original to me i don't even know what ucc is it's the right thread side you know it, it locks in fine but this gauge all looks shiny and obviously on there, it says fill and full. I have no idea if this is out of something else. And can I see it? Is it being cut? No. Then there's nothing to say that that is accurate. There's no way of telling. Therefore, I think it's just that there was too much put in here. Most of the time when you're using the forks for anything, they're absolutely fine. There's no leaking. It's only if you put the forks all the way down and you exert any pressure beyond ground level, you know, when you're pushing down, at that point, it's forced up here and out. I assume there is a, a relief 
mechanism in that maybe it just doesn't seal. There's like a, is that cork or, I don't know. But either way, there's a hole there. So the idea is that it can be released out and that's all it did. It just overflowed out, dripped off here and it just dripped down that ledge and that ledge and that's why it looked so disastrous. So I think it's just the case that it was too full. Um, and I don't know how to rectify that. I guess we just drain a bit out or we just exert enough until it's overflowed and stopped overflowing. And then I guess at that point we know that it shouldn't be too high. But either way, if anyone's got any tips, let me know. Any other thing I need to think we need to have a look at on here. I mean, I'm not gonna worry about the little engine leaks and bits and bobs. Uh, but apart from the normal servicing is going to be the starting. So if I put this back down, the starter, this sort of cold start or the heater for a cold start, I think is this here. And therefore, yeah, cause that's, that's a fuel line I think there coming in. So this, I just need to get a multimeter on here and just see if there's anything getting to this point. Um, the key, would indicate why is there no light Have we, oh maybe there's a safety catch that would be very exciting if that was the case no i don't think there is maybe we've got a flat battery i'm not actually sure if when you hold the heater on would this ever get hot to touch i've never tried it on the tractor so i'm not sure if it does but if i can see if there's any power getting to there that would be a start. It does start, it just needs a little bit of um, a little bit of play. Let's just see if we have flattened the battery because that wouldn't be clever. Unless there is some sort of safety. Hmm. Let's have a look. I don't actually need it right now, but oh no. Lights on. Maybe it's well, somewhere there's, I think maybe that had to be shut. Surely I didn't have to be on the seat. Oh, who knows? I worked out what this was. That is a motor for the windscreen wiper on the back, which I assume was a late addition. Oh no, there's a reverse light there as well. It's been wired in there. So I'm not sure what that one does fan we don't need obviously this used to have doors on it and if you've got doors on it then you're going to need the air blower so that's the air blower would have come in there i think blown out here onto your feet and into this metal slit up the windscreen front windscreen wiper works but as we've got no doors i don't think anything's going to be an issue with um airflow right let me show you a quick cold start and then someone might be able to give me a bit of a hint as to how we can improve this um there is on here cold start instructions which is handy basically just says throttle and heater for 10 seconds then try and start it or uh, 30 seconds then try and start it for 10 and repeat until it starts uh, i haven't worked out what that knob is for don't know if there's a horn or something but it doesn't work but anyway so we'll go for the imaginary heater just in case it is doing anything but I don't think it is. So we'll try and turn it over now. First time, that's normally second time. I think if the battery is kept charged well, that's not the end of the world for a 50 year old vehicle. So I couldn't date it. Pretty stable idle. Um, I was trying to date it and this is as far as I've got, the steering wheel. So the steering wheel here says that there is Design Council Awards 1977, 72 and 70. So unless they were predicting they were gonna get an award, this must be later than a 77. And you wouldn't put an award on there that you'd won three or four years beforehand. So I reckon probably a 78, 
5678, something like that. Either way, it's getting on a bit. Well, maybe we solved it. Maybe all that needed to leak out is now leaked out. So there we go. I'm just going to give it a wipe down and hopefully it stays that way. Anyway, that is the forklift. It needs a new name, so please uh, let me know what you think it needs to be called. Uh, where are we? Pallets of blocks. Yeah, I just went with pallets, so I kind of done it and then I saw it in the comments as well. I've pulled out a few pallets, so I've started stacking the hollow blocks on there. A few people said, let's not bother with that. Let's just buy new. I don't, I don't think that, uh, that it would be sensible to start chucking these. They are, they're pretty good. I mean, like I, like I showed, the, the mortar, I'm left-handed holding a camera, so it's probably not the... Let's have a go. This mortar comes off. Look. If I'm building a retaining wall in a garden, they are more than adequate. So I am going to keep them, it's just I'm not sure how many yet. Okay, a few more changes to share with you. The southern terrace, which is basically the raised platform area on that end is, I'd cut that slip because that was fine for the new wall and footings and everything that was needed. But it turns out there's quite a bit of drainage we're gonna to need to take out that way and various other reasons that it's all coming up as well. And I wanted to get everything ready for the crusher. So I brought the pecker through and everything that I could reach in these three bays is now all broken, lifted off the door. I need to get that up. All I'm gonna do is with these doors, I'm gonna take them all off the hinges and then I'm just gonna weld them to the railings along there. That'll give us a certain degree of kind of one safety to make sure that no one's falling through there because all there's at the moment is sheep net, but also a bit of security and protection from prevailing weather coming in. So I need to clear that before I can come out with the digger and break the two ends. What I'm now thinking is I've run out of space for concrete up there. I'm thinking I might start another pile and start loading it down onto this concrete slab down here. So we'll have to just take the machines around and do that second bit in a second batch. I think that makes sense rather than trying to cart it all there because I actually want quite a lot of the concrete crushings down there anyway. So I need to prep that with the digger and then we'll be good. Right, you missed out on all sorts. I'm not sure what happened with the time lapse. I've managed to break out both ends of the ramp now and the terrace. So it's all pecked, but it's not bucketed. Uh, and the reason for that is I haven't got anywhere to put it yet. So what I am doing now, I've brought the digger all the way around and I'm gonna clear out this alley down here. The muck is gonna get put into the dumper. That's been there a year. It's good, sweet stuff and we're gonna get it on the veg garden. Uh, I'll move this gate now. So if I clear this whole area here, these are part of pig arc. So we'll move all that over for now. And then I can just lift everything straight over the bars and fill all of this with the rubble.
I found three concrete sleepers at the bottom of the slope, so it wasn't concrete all the way. I'll use those down to finish off the brook crossing because we need a few more there through the water. Uh, but this is how we're looking. So it's just the same 40 mil to dust sub base all the way through, which is quite useful because, I mean, obviously it's well compacted and it's been there for 50 years. Um, but it means that when we come to lay patio out here, anything like that, there's something, you know, there's a good grounding already. These footings, the main footings of the steel frame are way, way deeper than they are proper uh, in the original ground. This was then built up afterwards to create the level sort of terrace for the cows to come out on down to the parlour. Anyway, there we go. I have uh, knocked it on the head for tonight, but it is broken out all the way down the slope the other end. I just need to finish carting all that up the slope and then piling it down on that slab. I think he estimated a day to a day and a half. I'm going to ask him to book in two days because it makes sense for me to go around the farm. Any other walls and bits of slabs and anything I need to break up, get it all done at once. Over on Patreon, we've just shared our very first um, 3D render of the front elevation and we've got some more sort of virtual um, stuff coming. Johnny's doing all the fancy work in the background on that. So we should have some more animations, fly throughs, and you should be able to picture a little bit more of what this is gonna become because I know it's quite a difficult one to imagine. Um, but if you do wanna see that front elevation shot, that just an initial one, um, and you're a member of the Patreon page, you can head over there. I'm pretty sure this was a jumbled video because we had all sorts going on with knocking down walls, forklift arriving, a little bit more work inside, obviously the demo outside. Um, I'm not sure if I featured it, uh, maybe I haven't filmed too much with it yet, but I've, this is the grading bar I've kind of made up. This is one of the smaller buckets. I had this big heavy juicy steel angle left from when the pylons came down. It just so happened that the holes were in the right place, it bolted on and it worked really well. Uh, that was a suggestion of uh, one of our viewers. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, it's just now a case of working my way through with the laser and getting the levels right. We're not far off. We've worked out already that we're within sort of 50, 60 mil in most places. There's obviously some dips, uh, but at that point, then uh, we can get that fairly smooth before all the drainage starts being trenched in. The drawings that I've seen the draft drawings. So now we're just um, confirming those and then it'll be a bit more precision work because we need to get all those depths right but it's all good. Progress. What's the best thing that's happened this week? Light evenings. Ah, oh, we finished in the light, which is amazing, isn't it, Maggie? We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. We'll see you next time.